Did you know that about a third of the Bible has to do with prophecies? And most of those prophecies are centered in the modern events happening in the Middle East. It might be difficult to believe, but what we are seeing in the Middle East today, particularly in the war between Israel and Hamas, is contributing to the final fulfillment of Bible prophecy. Just a few days ago, I created a video presentation entitled, How the Conflict in Israel and Gaza Fulfills Bible Prophecy. So if you haven't watched that video, I highly recommend you check it out and I'm sure you'll be surprised about how so much of the Bible talks about the conflicts we are seeing today. However, at this point, I want to create a follow-up video answering the question, where is Hamas in Bible prophecy? Join me now as we dive deep into the Word of God and discover amazing truths you'll never probably hear from the pulpits of Christian churches and even in mainstream news outlets today. Hello everyone, I'm Joshua Fantado of Becoming Christians Academy, the best online course for you if you want to become a zealous, faithful, and effective child of God. Before we proceed, I would like to invite you to learn more about Bible prophecies by reading 5 Scary Pitfalls You Should Avoid When Studying End Time Prophecy. This blog teaches you what your proper attitude should be when studying Bible prophecies and it gives you tips on how to understand them. I have included the link in the description box. With that, let's go back to our topic. Where is Hamas in Bible prophecy? To answer that question, we need to first know who Hamas is. Hamas is actually an acronym which stands for Harakat al Mukawima al Islamiyah. It simply means the Islamic Resistance Movement. The Arabic word Hamas means zeal, strength, or bravery. However, there's a similar sounding word to it, which is also pronounced as Hamas in Hebrew, but with a diametrically opposite meaning, which means violence. In the Bible, Strong's number of this word is H2555, which has the meaning violence, wrong, cruelty, and injustice. Now, I'm not a native Arabic or Hebrew speaker, so I may not be able to give justice to its proper pronunciation. So, listen to how it is pronounced based on the BibleStudy.com. Hamas. 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 In the KJV Bible, the word Hamas is translated almost 40 times as violence out of about 60 occurrences. The word violence seems to fit the characteristic of the militant group, which is also called by most people as a terrorist group. As you may already heard in the news, on October 7, 2023, Hamas attacked Israel, killing hundreds of civilians in the most frightening and degrading manner. Nevertheless, in years past, we know how Hamas violently attacked Israel by suicide bombing, rocket launches, and so much more. No wonder King David, thousands of years ago, prayed this about Hamas in Psalm 140 verses 1 to 4. Deliver me, O Yahweh, from evil men. Preserve me from violent men who plan evil things in their hearts. They continually gather together for war. They sharpen their tongues like a serpent. The poison of asps is under their lips. Now, where is Hamas in this verse? Well, if you look into the Hebrew word of violent in verse 1, it is actually Hamas. So reading it again, we get, Deliver me, O Yahweh, from evil men. Preserve me from Hamas men who plant evil things in their hearts. They continually gather together for war. They sharpen their tongues like a serpent. The poison of asps is under their lips. Does that describe what is currently happening in this present time? Does this describe what Hamas is doing to Israel? Well, certainly. Now, here's one of the most interesting biblical prophecies that I want you to take note of. Let's read Jeremiah 25, verses 17 to 20. Then I took the cup from Yahweh's hand and made all the nations drink, to whom Yahweh had sent me. 
Jerusalem in the cities of Judah, its kings and princes, to make them a desolation, an astonishment, a hissing, and a curse, as it is this day. Pharaoh, king of Egypt, his servants, his princes, and all his people, all the mixed multitude, all the kings of the land of Uz, all the kings of the land of the Philistines, namely Ashkelon, Gaza, Ekron, and the remnant of Ashdod. Then in verse 27, we read, Therefore you shall say to them, Thus says Yahweh of hosts, the God of Israel, Drink, be drunk, and vomit. Fall and rise no more, because of the sword which I will send among you. Ashkelon, Gaza, Ekron, and Ashdod were major cities of the Philistines. The Philistines have occupied the land people refer to as Palestine today, and it is more likely that the modern Palestinians have the blood of the Philistines running through their veins. So Ashkelon, Ekron, and Ashdod, did you notice that these cities are currently under the control of Israel? Could it be that in the future, the Palestinians would once again control these areas by force or as a result of a peace deal? Well, we don't know yet, but for now, my current understanding is that it could be what will happen in the future. Notice the judgment that will come upon Gaza and its inhabitants. We read Amos 1 verse 6 to 8. Thus says Yahweh, For three transgressions of Gaza and for four, I will not turn away its punishment, because they took captive the whole captivity to deliver them up to Edom. But I will send a fire upon the wall of Gaza, which shall devour its palaces. Now, look at what happened to the palaces of high-ranking officials of Hamas in Gaza. All of them turned to rubble and flattened by Israel's bombing. You surely can't find any palace in Gaza now, or at least most of them have already been destroyed. Now, continuing verse 8 here, it says, I will cut off the inhabitant from Ashdod, and one who holds the scepter from Ashkelon. I will turn my hand against Ekron and the remnant of the Philistines shall perish, says the Lord God. So we can see that there's a gloomy prophecy against Gaza and most likely Hamas in the end times. Thankfully, there is a day when Hamas will no longer exist in the land of Israel and anywhere in the world. Notice the prophetic writing of Isaiah in Isaiah 60 verses 17 to 18. Instead of bronze, I will bring gold. Instead of iron, I will bring silver. Instead of wood, bronze, and instead of stones, iron. I will also make your officers peace and your magistrates righteousness. Now, listen to this. In verse 18, violence here is once again the Hebrew word Hamas. With that in mind, let's read. Violence or Hamas shall no longer be heard in your land, neither wasting nor destruction within your borders, but you shall call your walls salvation and your gates praise. What a beautiful biblical prophecy. Yes, what we are seeing today seems to be an ending war and conflict and in the Middle East there's a lot of mess and chaos. However, it will not be like this in the world tomorrow. It won't be like that when Yahshua or Jesus Christ will return here on earth and finally establish the kingdom of his father. Friends, I hope this video once again helped you discover new and powerful insights in the Bible. You and I are blessed because Yahweh, our Abba in heaven, revealed this to us. He has shown us future events written in our Bibles to give us a living hope that one day this world shall surely experience lasting peace. May God speed that day. Now, before you go, I would like to invite you to join our free on-demand online class entitled, What is the Meaning of Life? The class only lasts for 24 minutes, but its lessons will last forever. So be sure to check it out. I have included the link in the description box. I hope that helps. Once again, I'm Josh Infantado, Becoming Christians Academy. Praying that Yahweh bless us all with His love, truth, and of course, peace. 
See you next time. Hello friends, I need your help. If this is not too much to ask, please like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. This should only take 5 seconds of your time. But this simple gesture would help me reach more people and share the word of God with the rest of the world. You have the power to make a difference in people's lives.